dress. How does it look? You'll see. Every woman in that place will stare at you, Lucy. Never mind the women. How about the men? <laughs> when the men see you in that dress, it'll take their breath away. Well, I hope not. If this gets me a man, I want one that's still breathing. <laughs> and here's the stole I promised to lend you. Oh, it's lovely. Why, it's genuine mink. This must have cost a fortune. How could you afford this? Oh, well, I didn't buy it alone. Six of us chipped in, and we each get to use it one day a week. Oh. What does it do on the seventh day, rest? <laughs> yes, and boy, does it need it. Well, I'm certainly lucky that your day is Saturday. Oh, no, my day is Tuesday. I switched with Mildred. Oh, Mildred's day is Saturday. No, her day is Wednesday. <laughs> but Mildred switched with Roselle, whose day is Thursday. And Roselle switched with Irving. <laughs> Irving? Irving's a bachelor. He uses it for date bait. <laughs> oh, baby, if you could only talk. <laughs> you're sure you're going to be able to get this for me for Saturday? Oh, sure, but I have to get it over to Ella for tomorrow. But Ella has a date with Irving, so that saves us a day. <laughs> but don't worry, honey. You'll get it by Saturday night. Oh, well, okay, I... I really want to thank you, Mary Jane. And I guess I should also thank Mildred and Roselle and Ella and Irving. <laughs> I feel like I just won an Academy Award. <laughs> well, if they give an award at that affair for the most beautiful girl, you'll win it. Oh, I don't know about that. But I do want to look nice because it's going to be a lot of very eligible bachelors oh, there, yeah, you know. Oh, really? Yeah. What's, what's the banquet for, Lucy? Well, it's the 50th anniversary of the founding of the bank. And the guest of honor will be the president of the entire organization, Mr. Cornelius Hetherington, Jr. Oh, the name even sounds rich. Oh, he is. He's worth millions. He has two yachts. He has homes all over the world. New York, Paris, Hawaii. Well, is he married? No. That's what I call an eligible bachelor. Well, he's also 80 years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could use another man in my life, but I'd prefer a little more life in my man. <laughs> I'm going to get this off. I don't want to get it wrinkled. Yeah, well, I have to rush this over to Edith. Edith? Who's Edith? Oh, well, she's the sixth owner, and she's got a heavy date tonight. You know something? I envy that mink. It's dead, and it goes out more than I do. <laughs> Now, you'd better remind the musicians that we expect them to be there at 7.30. The dinner starts promptly at 8. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, be sure and check with the florist, too. Yes, sir. Now, I want you to follow through on every single detail. This is a very important affair. I don't want anything to go wrong. Now, don't you worry. Just leave everything to me. <laughs> That's what worries me. Nothing will go wrong, Mr. Mooney. Well, I certainly hope not. You know, I'm so excited about this banquet. I spent two weeks' salary on a new gown. Mrs. Mooney spent three weeks' salary on a new gown. I didn't know she worked. My salary. <laughs> oh. you know, she bought herself one of these new evening gowns with a mini skirt. Oh, how does she look? Grotesque. <laughs> Mr. Mooney, you can't blame her for wanting to wear the latest style. True, true, but miniskirts are not for her. No. No, no, she's much too bow-legged. <laughs> if you ever straightened her legs out, she'd be seven feet tall. Well, uh, is there anything else that you want me to take care of, sir? Uh, no, I, I think that covers everything. Oh, by the way... Uh, while you were out, the manager of the banquet hall called regarding the color scheme of the decoration. Oh, yes? And I told him to do everything in gold and green. Gold and green? Yes, sir. That sounds like a peculiar combination. No. But very appropriate. You see, I picked gold because it's the bank's golden anniversary, and I picked green because it's every banker's favorite color. 
<laughs> that is entirely too obvious. Obvious? It, yes, it's almost poor taste. Now, you get in touch with the banquet hall and have those colors changed to pink and purple. <laughs> Pink and purple, yuck! Pink and purple happen to be my old school colors. Oh. Now get in touch with them and have those colors oh, changed. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Mooney? Oh, yeah. yes, sir. Mooney, an emergency has come up, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to give up your lunch hour. That's quite all right, sir. Anything to help out, sir? Well, I was scheduled to pick up Mr. Hetherington at the airport. However, a crisis has arisen, and I have called a meeting in my office immediately. With all the important vice presidents. I'll be right in, sir. Not yes. you. <laughs> you go to the airport. Uh, oh, and, uh, Mooney, you better bring your secretary along, too. Mr. Hetherington might want to dictate some letters on his way from the airport. Yes, sir. Oh, and, yes. uh, Mooney, there's one thing yes, more. Sir. Yes, sir. I want you to decorate the banquet hall in Mr. Hetherington's favorite school colors. Gold and green. <laughs> gold and green. Well, I have already ordered those colors, sir. Really? Well, that was a lucky guess. <laughs> oh, it wasn't a guess, sir. When I'm given an assignment, I check things thoroughly. Nothing gets past me, sir. Well, good thinking, Mooney. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Just one word, you're fired. Airport's the most exciting place in the whole world. It's always filled with people, and each person is here for a different reason. Do you ever think of that? Now, look, look. That couple has probably just been married, and they're going on their honeymoon. Yeah, that's what I think. Oh, and look. See this lady right here? I think she's the grandmother. She's going to go visit her grandchildren. See? <laughs> <laughs> look at that man. Probably a businessman. Or maybe a diplomat going to a foreign country with a secret mission. <laughs> There's a father and son. Now, I wonder what their story is. Where can that man be taking his little boy? <laughs> Now you know, nosy. Flight number 234, now arriving from Honolulu at gate 10. Is that oh, it? That's it. That's Mr. Oh, Hedrick's really? flight. Oh, really? I'm so Honolulu. excited. Is my hair combed? Do I look all right? Oh, yes, you How's my fine. lipstick? Is fine. my lipstick on straight? Look, yes, you look perfect. I want to make a good impression on Mr. Hetherington. Look, he's just going to dictate to you, not propose. Well, I, I've never met a millionaire before. I just want to look my best. Well, millionaires, not just like anybody else. You just treat them like normal human beings. Yeah, I know. <laughs> of the bank, but a slight bow from the waist would have been sufficient. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm sorry, sir, but I tripped. Uh, I'm afraid it was all my fault. And uh, who is this charming young lady? Oh, uh, this is my secretary, Mrs. Carmichael. Oh, how do you do, uh, sir? Do you think happy to meet the you? pleasure is all mine. Mm -hmm. uh, you have excellent taste in secretaries, Mooney. Oh. Yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> I uh, trust you had a pleasant flight, sir. Oh, fine. I chartered the whole plane. The whole plane? Yep. That way I get the three stewardesses all for myself. <laughs> Go now. 
Mm -hmm. May I? Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> for a moment. He ought to be, though. Oh, there he is. Oh, uh, Mooney, did you pick up Mr. Hetherington at the airport? Oh, yes, sir. Did you get him back to his hotel? Yes, sir, and he's very happy with his accommodations, sir. Well, good. Let us hope that he will be as, as happy with the lady you have selected for him to escort to the banquet tonight. The lady? <laughs> yes! But, uh, but, but uh, you, you didn't say anything about a lady, sir. Well, I didn't think it was necessary. You said that when you were given an assignment... You check things thoroughly. <laughs> and if you had, you would have known that Mr. Hetherington never attends a social function unless he escorts a lady. Uh, well, sir, I didn't think that a man of his age would be interested in the opposite sex. Mooney, <laughs> <laughs> he is old, not dead. <laughs> now, I expect you to provide a lady for him. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult, sir. I'm quite sure one of our charming female employees would be happy to go with him. Wouldn't you, Mrs. Carmichael? <laughs> me? Yes, you. And give me one good reason why not. I don't like it. Oh, that's a good reason. <laughs> Mrs. Carmichael is too young and attractive. That's true. <laughs> We can't have the president of the bank seem like a playboy. Oh, you're quite right, sir. No. We've got to have someone closer to his own age. Someone refined and wealthy and dignified and keeping with his position. Well, I'll do my best, sir. I promise you. I don't want promises. I want results. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh.